welcome back and uh, we are continuing our study of statistical mechanics of ideal gases till now we have done monatomic and diatomic and not only that we have done the statistical mechanical we derived the statistical mechanical expressions of uh, free energy entropy and specific heat we for trans monatomic we did the translation that part remains invariant in the diatomic but diatomic brings the two new ingredients one is the rotation and vibration and we have used the harmonic oscillator model of quantum mechanics to derive expression for those those quantities for harmonic oscillator and we showed that that this, this is one of the most respected used and time honored model applied to many systems of physics and chemistry and biology and then we did the rotation uh, using the rigid rotator we we uh, worked out again the statistical mechanics now uh, the most many of the systems that we are interested in like water ammonia alcohols they are all polyatomic molecules and polyatomic molecules have characteristics which are quite different from that of diatomic the reason is that the polyatomic will have now in addition to translational degrees of freedom in addition to translational degrees of freedom at in rotational degrees of freedom <coughs> it has vibration it is many more now as we all know the vibration number of vibrational degrees of freedom is more in case of linear because their rotation is only 2 but for nonlinear molecules where you have 3 rotation we have 3 and minus 6 the vibrational degrees of freedom and this is what actually gives rise to when the large molecules like polymers form or when they form they are uh, sitting together in a uh, in a crystalline form in a solid amorphous then we lose the translational degrees of freedom that they have and that get transferred to vibration degrees of freedom and that showed up shows up as a normal modes which are played so important role in the specific heat and thermodynamic properties of low temperature solids not just crystals but also amorphous materials and these are at low temperature liquids even they are very very important quantities so but however the polyatomic molecules um, have many other peculiarities of their own that we are going to discuss today and they want to do a how to do statistical mechanics of polyatomic molecules so that a student knows how to start talking of entropy and uh, and free energy and specific heat the molecular component of the um, polyatomic molecule and that statistical mechanics gives you and we already have it but so we will have a slightly uh, more generalized form of what you did in diatomic and so it will be it will be uh, not too demanding a session we did do in a small way the polyatomic earlier but we are going to do a little bit better now and in certain sense also it is a review of many of the things that we are going to do okay and uh, we wrote down before we are neglecting the electronic degrees of freedom because the electronic energy level gap is much larger typically electronic energy levels are of the order of say 10,000 centimeter inverse 7,000 centimeter inverse which are huge so they do not enter at the room temperature uh, the ambient conditions uh, electronic degrees of freedom it does not show up in the thermodynamics it does show up in the spectroscopy when you are giving external source of energy and resonance condition and exciting but in the thermodynamic properties it is a ground state of electronic degrees of freedom that that is all that you need to worry about and we can take that energy as a zero so that just it doesn't change with temperature doesn't change with pressure volume we don't need to talk about it so then i can write the partition function as a product of three as we already discussed that it is translation and this is a molecular molecular partition function so, uh, this is a molecular partition function and uh, these uh, okay, the molecular degrees of freedom, um, uh, the molecular partition function q small q is my notation for uh, and capital Q is my notation for the partition function of n particle system. So, then these q translation, q rotation and q vibration. 
Now, translation is the center of mass, so we do that. Then, if you have a nonlinear molecular three rotational degrees of freedom, I call it q dot 1, q dot 2, q dot 3, and then I have the all the other degrees of freedom that is given here, and that is of course not just 3, if there are 3 vibrational degrees of freedom, then it is 3, uh, but otherwise that can be many more degrees of freedom that would be showing here. So, and that is shown here. So, since they are all uh, these vibrations are uh, independent of each other, the normal modes, then Q vibration is a product of all the vibrational degrees of freedom, which is written here that I have a uh, new stands for vibration in the notation and J is the different normal modes. So, then my total vibrational uh, partition function is product of e to the power minus theta nu j by 2 t and uh, by t because the remember theta is, and this is the alpha is the given here uh, and theta nu j is the vibrational temperature. And this one is the one that is, comes from 0 point energy if I to remind you and this is the one that comes from the detailed sum of this power series which x, x 1 plus x plus x square and that becomes 1 for x less than 1 because 1 over 1 minus x. So, this is the one we derived, it derived in the in the uh, last uh, or um, the, the one before last class. So, now this we know of this. So, then we can set up the partition function now. So, vibrational part is fairly simple, vibrational part is fairly simple because we have this thing and you give me the um, uh, frequencies and give me the that gives me the uh, uh, vibrational temperature and uh, I can I can give you the partition function. So, now we will con uh, concentrate on the uh, the rotational part. Rotational partition function has is very important in polyatomic molecules and because there is a you know this kind of uh, can be jittery and all the kind of motions that many times you face are basically some kind of restricted rotation. Now, rotation has fairly different cases we, we need to consider. One is where all the moment of inertia are the same because there are three direction in a nonlinear molecules and you can have three principal axis and you have three moment of inertia. Now, if this is completely spherical, we call spherical top molecule like methane, then we have no problem. We have all the moment of inertia are the same, which is like I A I B equal to I C. The spherical top, the degeneracy of the rotation energy becomes 2 j plus 1 square. Uh, if, if they can equal uh, uh, principal moment of inertia, uh, then all this uh, and we can then write these uh, 2 j plus 1 uh, the degeneracy of the rotational energy levels and the equal principal moments of inertia is then you do instead of this product we will have uh, 2 j plus 1 square and uh, then we get uh, this expression for the uh, rotational partition function uh, and then we take the following limit at high temperature. Uh, when temperature becomes very high, then and uh, moment of inertia also not too small, then the, the ones that will be involved are very large j, large quantum numbers will be involved and large quantum numbers then I can, uh, I can approximate j plus 1 by j that is a very neat neat uh, approximation and then uh, my rotational partition function becomes um, uh, this become 4 j square this one then it becomes like then it, this is a beautiful thing. So, in the high temperature limit I can do this integration now it is no longer the difficulty I had, but remember even in the di diatomic case we could evaluate we could evaluate the large uh, high temperature limit. Here also, then the high temperature in, in, in the polyatomic case, the high temperature limit can be worked out and again we get a very neat expression of the rotational partition function. So, uh, continuing, we now do symmetric molecules. Now, symmetric top molecules are the ones who, which are like symmetric top, which are two moment of inertia are the same and third one is different. 
it can be prolate in the prolate if it is a prolate then then in this b and c are the same moment of inertia and this a is different so moment of inertia i a is let is an i b equal to i c that is prolate and it can be oblate in the oblate case then it is uh, these things so this direction c is different from in the, the in the spherical direction which is a and b so prolate and oblate are uh, two different things and in that in that case we can calculate the partition function by uh, using the method uh, similar to this one that uh, uh, remember that uh, if you go to rotational case in the diatomic case the partition function is uh, uh, 8 pi square i by k b t 3 by 2 h square then the same thing happens here. So, the quantity is that 2 of them comes with 8 pi square i a k b t by h square half and half. So, when a equal to b when a equal to b then this half and half becomes just 1 and then you have this c half ok. So, whatever I do either prolate or oblate depending on a and b like for example, in the case of prolate it would be a here and uh, then uh, okay b here and a here in the case of oblate the other way around a here and c here that just just the same thing of course the values can be very different so but then one comes the most general case with the asymmetric top molecule in asymmetric top molecule all the principal moments of inertia and this is the general case like the case of water molecules case of methane they are all asymmetric top molecules where all the moment of inertia are different and this analytical expression of variables cannot be obtained by solving sorting air equation that is the real unfortunate part. So, in the previous case part the um, this case this thing comes from solving the sorting air equation the degeneracy factor of a spherical top molecules that it is 2j plus 1 plus whole square the for a polyatomic molecule this is comes from Schrodinger equation. However, this case in the case of um, uh, completely asymmetric molecule we cannot do we cannot solve the Schrodinger equation and as a result we cannot uh, get those energy levels. So, the Schrodinger equation can be cannot be solved analytically. So, for the diatomic we get analytically uh, for for uh, symmetric top the spherical top we get it analytically with the different degeneracy. Now, for the prolate and oblate we again get so prolate and oblate dec um, uh, when they, are, uh, they, they, uh, they, they decompose separately and we can get the energy levels again and we can solve for the at least high temperature limit the partition function. But in the case of um, fully asymmetric molecule where the moment of inertia a b c are different it cannot be we do not have any close form analytical expression for the energy levels and that poses a problem. So, in that case the Schrodinger equation has to be solved numerically to obtain the energy levels. This is very very difficult and this is a laborious process this is a laborious process, but the, the we, we can we can obtain the, this this classical limit. Uh, the high temperature limit that the high temperature as I said the quantum goes over to uh, classical partition function in the in the, the high temperature that means I can start partition function from classical Hamiltonian I can do from quantum Hamiltonian then I can show that high temperature the quantum uh, goes over to classical which is very nice and has to be because there is nothing uh, no surprise there at all. Uh, but in this case where you cannot do anything in the uh, for the for the uh, quantum case because energy levels are not known we can do anything other than numerically that is actually done many many cases numerically one solves and gets a but we, we can make progress with the classical Hamiltonian which can be done and classical Hamiltonian of course can be just integrated I write down the moment of inertia I have a b c and write down the there is no uh, uh, there is no potential energy still it is just the rotating and it has the rotational kinetic energy. And rotational kinetic energy, I know how to do the rotational kinetic energy, the rotational angular momentum divided by 2i, and then I can in integrate that. And that will I we know that we, that gives this kind of form. So now I have one for a, one for b, and one for c. So I have 
3 and total rotational partition function is product of these 3 which is just the one we got in classical uh, from classical statistical mechanics or the high temperature limit of the quantum diatomic case uh, with one moment of inertia. But here also when they are uh, written in terms of moment of inertia they are already decomposed mm, and then uh, we can uh, get that and then we can write the rotational partition function you, I can combine these things and define uh, theta a, theta b, theta c in terms by using uh, all these quantities because that quantity then becomes 1 over theta b uh, or, or sorry 1 over theta a and that becomes 1 over theta b and this becomes 1 over theta c then my partition function becomes this quantity root over pi by sigma t cube theta. There is a very neat, very nice and neat and very uh, elegant expression. And remember the half is preserved now because each comes with a half and that half shows us here. So, this is the uh, rotational partition function that uh, complete rotational uh, partition function of a polyatomic molecule. So, now we do we have this. So, we go back and we have the uh, we have the uh, we go back and we have this uh, total partition function and now we want to do certain uh, thermodynamics with this uh, expression and what are the kind of values that you get ok. So, let us now consider some specific cases. Now, the temperature the rotational temperature and vibrational temperature gives you a measure this is a very important thing they give you a measure of the quantumness of the system and the importance of that particular mode in my thermodynamic properties. For example, in case of water I have uh, 3 vibrations. What are the 3 vibrations? One is symmetric stretching, one is asymmet uh, asymmetric stretching, other is bending the 3 vibrations for water. Now, look at them we already know one is 3650 centimeter inverse symmetric stretching little bit higher is uh, asymmetric stretching that is 3700 centimeter inverse bending is ab half of nearly half of that that is 1885 centimeter inverse. So, very nicely plays those three and that plays a very important role in vibration relaxation. Mm, uh, there is some of the uh, outstanding discoveries that made in recent times ok. Now, if we do that then look at this uh, uh, in case of water. So, this is asymmetric stretching, this is symmetric stretching, this is the bending all right. Now, if it is so, then I can easily see that in thermodynamic properties my if temperature it will be relevant at 5000 Kelvin no. So, at room temperature I do not need to worry. I do not need to worry at all for water, but look at rota uh, rotation, rotational temperature are really very low the 3 moment of inertia of uh, uh, asymmetric that water molecules the 3 axis of rotation they come. So, this temperature that means they are uh, uh, they are almost classical and I they, they, they influence the uh, statistical that influence the thermodynamics. So, I need to take into rotational degrees of freedom in understanding thermodynamics and this has a very interesting story. So, for some time quite some time people are trying to calculate the entropy of water. This is actually big big game now of last uh, some 15 20 years what is the entropy of water because the entropy of water as I said plays a very important role in many many chemical reactions. Uh, uh, and one, I give you an example when a, a, a DNA drug goes into a drug, drug goes into DNA then of course, the drug loses the entropy, but the system gains entropy. The way system gains entropy the water molecules which were inside of the were, were imbibing were inside the uh, residing inside the uh, major and minor groups they are displaced. So, when they are in minor group they did not have any entropy there is some extra enthalpy, but they are no entropy. So, when they go out they gain lot of entropy. So, we kind of take into account OA that 10 molecules that are getting displaced, the 10 molecules going from minor group of DNA to water. So, what is the entropy for water molecule? If I know then 10 times that is the entropy gain in the process. Okay. And then uh, 
I can use Sakutet equation or something to get the A. But Sakutet equation still in a uh, liquid water is not a great approximation, but it, that, that they get you started. Very, very interesting. Now, when all these calculations were done in the initially, people were not getting very good agreement of the entropy of uh, water uh, in the and entropy of water can be obtained also experimentally in a laborious process by starting from all the way from 0 Kelvin uh, ice, then going into make it melt, go into liquid, then you know we, we can calculate that take the latent heat of fusion uh, into and we, we know the entropy of water experimentally. That was not working that well. Mm -hmm. Then we realized that we did not take into account the vibration and rotational entropy contribution. Uh, but as I show you, vibration is not important, but rotation important. Translation is of course important. So it turns out the rotational in contribution to entropy of water is about 30 percent. It is a huge contribution that comes from a uh, rotation. It is something like that. One in the entropic unit, rotational contribution is about 5 or 5.2 and the translation contribution is 17. So, if total entropy is 22, uh, you already had a table saying 17, the translation comes and then uh, this, this, this uh, another 5 comes from and in order to calculate that entropy, I have to calculate, I have to use, uh, I, I use this expression, this expression I use to calculate the rotational partition function, I get the free energy A equal to minus kVT L and Q and I take the derivative of that and get the entropy. That entropy now is and is extremely important contribution for water rotational entropy contribution at room temperature is 30 percent of the translation contribution. This is a really very important that we missed you know it is very recently that we missed this thing. This is just about I think 10 years old. Now another uh, system of interest is ammonia. In ammonia has again this uh, ammonia has uh, uh, four vibrations the stretching, stretching anti symmetry stretching and and, and, and bending mode. Now, those are vibrational temperature, the theta 5 that we define in terms of the frequency and that is pretty large. So, 1 is 4800 that is very large a, a vibration, this is another vibration, these two are some kind of bending modes. I do not uh, uh, remember fully the modes, but they are they are, they are certainly not uh, bond stretching modes. But even then, these are pretty high temperature, the room temperature, remember it will be e to the power minus, the contribution comes as e to the power minus theta by T, that would be theta vibration by T. And since theta vibration is so large temperature at, 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 at 300 Kelvin, even this guy is e to the power minus 4. And uh, it was uh, yeah four point uh, something. These are of course much larger. Um, so this this contribution um, is minimum. However, the same e to the power minus theta rotation by t, all in Kelvin. Look at that. This theta is small. So all these things play a very very important role. So all these three modes play a very important role in the entropy or the thermodynamic properties of ammonia. Similar things you find in sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, methane, everywhere you see the vibration temperature is very high. So, when it comes e to the power minus set of vibration by T, the vibrational degrees of freedom do not contribute significantly at ambient conditions to the thermodynamic properties. So, molecular thermodynamics, molecular partition function and um, uh, molecular thermodynamics, the vibration is a silent thing, we do not see it. We find huge contribution of translation, but then a significant 20 to 30, 35 percent contribution comes from rotation. So, rotational degrees of freedom cannot be ignored in when you are doing and this is a very, very important thing because see most of the books and most of the studies that we hear everywhere that people are doing they, 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 as if the world uh, begins and ends with uh, monatomic molecules, maybe a little bit of diatomic. 
like uh, take take the phase transition theories and all these things that we will be doing something. We 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 start with sphere, spherical molecules, you know, and we end with spherical molecules. Like our studies of glass transition theory do, theory of liquids that we do. They are all uh, models and things we call Leonard Jones models and other things, but they are all spheres. But uh, this is something. So, when we did statistical mechanics in 1970s and 80s, we learned uh, towards the end of 70s and 80s when were, I was doing a PhD and postdoc, we really never bothered about even the, the popular textbooks of statistical mechanics, they do not have much of polyatomic molecules. So, our, our emphasis and the book that I have written, the statistical mechanics books for uh, uh, chemistry and material science, that is why we have a, a, a very big. Uh, discussion of polyatomic molecules and a lot of emphasis given on polyatomic molecules because these days we are interested in these kind of systems. Okay. So, uh, let us continue then. Then entropy of a polyatomic molecule is a just a wonderful thing as I just discussed to you. So, this is the thing the translational part. So, entropy since part uh, partition function is Q translation, Q vibration and Q rotation. And then um, free energy is minus KBT L and Q. So, this they, they decompose free energy becomes sum of the free energy and entropy becomes sum of the entropy. This is trivial, but sometimes it is good to spell out the trivial thing because to uh, 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 help the thinking. That is then this is our Sakut Tetrod equation, this is the Sakut Tetrod equation, and then this is the rotational. Now, I have arranged it such that most important thing in translation which water and ammonia has about 65 to 70 percent of the total entropy. Then the rotation which is mm, classical limit, but classical limit works out reasonably well as I showed you uh, in, uh, in these things. Fortunately for us, this, this theta vibration is small. So, we are ok because the room temperature is much larger than this. So, we can uh, rely uh, doing classical mechanics. This is a lucky break. Uh, in quantum, no way it is too much, it is too quantum, but this is nearly classical. This is very, very, very interesting how lucky one can get some time. So, like for, for translation, you get away by doing classical mechanics. For rotation, for translation, you get away. Rotation, you also get away by doing as I showed you for many of the molecules. Vibration we are not that lucky, but vibration with the harmonic is a good approximation. So, this is translation, this is rotation and this is vibrational contribution to the total entropy and as I said this is actually negligible. So, these two does the job perfectly for us. The, so, now we are, I have given you a table actually this is, I have preempted little bit I told you I already showed this table 17 and 5 which is I was talking from memory, but there it is that water uh, molecular weight and every detail is given and these are the three moment of inertia I have given you water. These are the things you do not get in the physics textbooks and or even earlier versions of StatMac, but now these are so important in the present day research and present day calculations that um, polyatomic uh, study of statistical mechanics of polyatomic molecules is an important thing that is what I am discussing it, though I discussed this a little bit before I am discussing it again more detail. And as I tell, there is no damage is done by doing it. Uh, these, these beautiful things uh, more than once. Okay. So look at that. To, in water, has this um, nice thing is the two of the moment of inertia are very close to each other, and uh, these are these two, A and B, 1.09 and 1.91, and this is quite different. Now this is what I was saying. 17.41 is a translational part in the entropy unit in the KB. And this is the one that rotation 5.45. But look at vibration contribution is negligible. When you add up all these things, you get this is the entropy of water. Beautiful, very, very nice. Now, the other thing is a, 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 uh, ammonia. Ammonia, there are these things that do things that nearly degenerate. And uh, then uh, this one is larger moment of inertia. Now, a, a very similar story unfolds for uh, ammonia. Translation and rotation. Now, rotational contribution little bit larger that you could guess because go back 
you could guess that it will be larger because look at the rotational temperature. The rotational temperature of ammonia is lower than that of the So, as soon as rotational temperature becomes lower, its contribution becomes more to the partition function and to free energy and to entropy and right that is the one that happens. So, uh, if 5.4, 5.91, this is slightly less, but then at the end of the day, we have this value of the entropy. And as I said, this is a very important thing in thermodynamic properties to get the ideal entropy. There are uh, many expressions in, of entropy and for example, connection between diffusion entropy, there is a property called Dresden Rosenfeld scaling, which needs the ideal entropy, ideal gas entropy and what uses this value of ideal gas entropy of water molecules to predict the diffusion constant in liquid uh, with, with certain, certain other, other terms involving, but this plays a very, very important role in, in the properties of liquid, okay. So, so this area I summarized it here that the, this is straight from the book, statistical mechanics book. Um, the stat mac book by CRC press from that it is taken that a translational entropy contribution the most, but also rotational contribution is this is my favorite. Uh, I did not know myself uh, about five you know, six years ago. The rotational contribution is 30 percent because we also grew up like um, uh, doing as if uh, the everything is learned Jones as if uh, there is uh, everything can be modeled as spheres, but then you miss out all these things. Uh, molecule vibration entropy is uh, only only considers intermolecular mode that are not very important. So, the contribution lies from vibration is negligible. So, uh, this is very encouraged to carry out numerical calculations of polyvalent molecules like chloroform. This is a this is a homework that we will set up to make you do something like uh, methanol uh, and you can calculate them uh, by doing the homework things. So, uh, here ends the uh, uh, statistical mechanics of uh, ideal gases. We I just summarize what you do in one minute that we have done uh, now in great detail uh, monatomic gas which is spheres, non-interacting spheres. Then with the diatomic like nitrogen, oxygen, they are rotating and they have a vibrational degrees of freedom. Vibrational degrees of freedom has beautifully comes with this uh, harmonic oscillator and the Schrodinger solution. And uh, however, in thermodynamics, those vibrational degrees of freedom do not play a role, but translation and rotation plays. Then we went to polyatomic molecules and we did statistical mechanics of polyatomic molecules, the very important case of water, very important case of ammonia and, uh, or other sulfur dioxide and all other important molecules that we need to do in everyday life and in any real problems like you know and that then at the end of uh, this part. So, stop here, we will take a break and we will go over to the next class. Mm -hmm.